Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we will look at taking decisions using cost information and introduce the idea of incremental analysis. We will also introduce the idea of the death spiral in cost information and allocation of costs. Incremental analysis is a way of using information to solve certain accounting questions. The additional revenue received by taking one decision over another is called the incremental revenue. The additional cost incurred by taking one decision over another is the incremental cost. The difference between these is called the incremental profit. Only information that is relevant is used for incremental costs. This means only considering those costs that differ between two or more alternatives. If a cost remains the same, that is, it is fixed for all alternatives, then it is not a relevant cost for the decision. Let us work through a simple example to illustrate these points. The Cuddle Close Cinema is considering whether it should put on matinee shows. It already runs evening performances on three days of the week. What sort of information does the manageress, Ricky Biceps, need to take a decision? The decision requires that we know the incremental revenues and the incremental costs. This means that we must consider a time period over which these costs are being estimated. The time period chosen will be relevant to the decision. For example, a seasonal industry should consider information relevant to the season. The information available to the manager S is that for revenues, costs for utilities, staffing, insurance, food supplies that are sold, payment of royalties, rent and other fixed costs. From these she can determine the profit for the two alternatives. We have entered the cost and the revenue in the first two columns. You should look at the figures and see that rent and other fixed costs have not altered. Rent is paid on the property and so will not increase if additional opening is the alternative. Now we carry out the incremental analysis part. You can see that some figures show a difference, but those for rent and other fixed costs do not, and so these are not relevant to the decision. We have highlighted the costs that are not relevant. Here the revenue and relevant costs are highlighted. The analysis shows us that there is an incremental profit of $6,750 from accepting the proposal to open and have matinee performances, and so this is the decision that should be taken. Since the first alternative showed an incremental profit, the manager S now considers another alternative, that is to open the cinema for seven days each week. The same procedure for incremental analysis will now be carried out for this alternative. Since the manageress knows that the matinee alternative will increase profit, she need only compare the new alternative with this alternative. In other words, only the relevant information is being considered. Proposal 1 here is the alternative that includes the matinee performances. Having determined the new estimated revenue and costs, She finds that larger increases than expected are required for staffing, the cinema relies on part-time staff, increases in utilities will be the result of extra demands for electricity and water. She also finds that her insurance premium will have to increase for additional time when the public are in the cinema. The end result of these increases in costs is that the cinema would actually start to lose money. The analysis shows that a profit of $11,750 would be turned into a loss of $1,750. The matinee alternative remains the best decision. Incremental analysis is often used for decisions that may need to be taken when it is decided that a product is to be discontinued. 
Very often such a decision needs to consider the amount of work that is still in progress or how many incomplete items there are at the time the decision is made. There are usually three choices or alternatives. The company can continue to complete the unfinished items and try and sell them off, usually at a reduced price, or sell them to a third party to complete, or write off the unfinished items. Zebedee Bicycles has to take such a decision with a chipper model that is to be discontinued. There are 2,000 partially completed bicycles. A third party, Panker Products, makes an offer to purchase the partly completed bicycles. The offer from Panker is for $140 per incomplete bicycle. Zebedee Bicycles believes they can complete and sell the units themselves for $195 for each bicycle. How do they determine the best alternative? The first analysis that is needed is to determine the costs that have been incurred to this point, and then to determine the costs required to complete the bicycles themselves. The records show that $97 of cost has been incurred on each bicycle to date, comprising direct materials, direct labour, variable overhead and fixed overhead. A further $47 would be required to complete each bicycle. Note that only variable costs are relevant to this situation, since the fixed overhead has already been incurred. Now the alternatives can be compared. The revenue and costs of selling to Panker Products is shown. The revenue per unit is the $140 offered by Panker Products, and after deducting costs incurred to date, there will be a profit of $42 per bicycle. How does this compare with completing the work themselves? The additional cost of completion will incur a further $47 of cost per bicycle. This is comprised of direct labour, direct materials and variable overhead. Our incremental analysis shows that will be a gain of $8 per bicycle if Zebedee complete and sell the bicycles themselves. Completion of the bicycles should be the decision taken. Another type of decision is whether a company should buy in components or make the components. For some companies, assembly is the main activity, with most components being bought. This is so in the computer industry. Crystal Products makes washing machines, and they make their own electric motors. The decision to be taken is whether to continue to make 12,500 electric motors a year, or whether to purchase the motors for $66 a unit from King Motor Company. Crystal Products will start by determining the costs for producing motors, beginning with the variable costs for direct labour, direct materials and variable overhead. The fixed costs are then determined for rent, depreciation and the employment of a line manager who has a permanent position. Separation of variable costs and fixed costs is important because the fixed costs will still be incurred if the motors are made by King Motor Company. The total cost of making the motors is $958,000 or $76.64 per unit. If the motors are purchased from King Motor Company then there will be no costs for direct labour, materials or variable overhead. The fixed costs will still be incurred. Add in the purchase cost of the motors and the total cost will be $1,025,000. Crystal Products should continue the manufacture of motors themselves since the cost will be $67,000 less for producing 12,500 motors themselves. When a company produces several different products, or sells several different lines, then each product or line is analysed for performance. The decision a company then has to take is whether to continue all products and lines, or whether some should be dropped. Asteroid Electrical divides its sales into television, computers and peripherals, and small appliances. The income statement for Asteroid Electrical shows sales revenues of $665,000, 
with fixed costs of $90,000 and a net income of $165,500. These areas have been highlighted because these are relevant areas for decisions to be made. The television department has sales of $200,000 with a net income of $3,932. A total of $27,068 of fixed costs are allocated to the department. The computer department has sales of $350,000 producing a net income of $166,132 after deducting the fixed cost allocation of $47,368. The appliances department has sales of $115,000 but is making a loss of $3,564 after deducting their allocated fixed costs of $15,564. The decision then is whether to discontinue the appliances department. If the appliance department is dropped then the fixed costs still have to be allocated since they will not change in total. Only now they need to be allocated between the two departments of television and computers. The computer department will now have an allocation of $57,273 of fixed costs, so the net income will be $156,227. The television department will have allocated fixed costs of $37,727. This now produces a loss for that department of $1,727. Where removing products or lines has this effect, that of producing a loss in other areas due to the allocation of fixed costs, the feature is often referred to as the death spiral in accounting. This ends our podcast to illustrate some aspects of decision making. Brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.